Hello and welcome to another episode of b and Financially Free. I'm Chantal. This is our co-host, Peter. And we are so excited to have Miss Terry Lee in the house Hi. today. <laughs> Peter, Hi, why, don't, why don't you tell us who Terry Lee is? Yeah, Terry Lee is one of our top designers here uh, at Good Neighbor. We recommend her to almost all of our clients. She is extremely uh, efficient when it comes to design. Um She's done so many of our clients' houses, and they do so well. It's like, um, I guess it's like, she makes it much easier. Like, she makes something that's extremely hard much easier on both ourselves and our clients. So um, we, we were really excited to have her on to kind of, like, talk about a little bit about her, like, the, the specifics and, like, some of her, uh, like, great aspects of the business. You guys are kind. Thank you. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so tell us, I mean, I would love to know two things. So you're an investor. You're also a designer. You weren't originally in short-term rental design. Mm -hmm. You were in just re residential, traditional. Yep. Tell us how you became a designer, how you became an investor. Sure. And then we'll kind of get into the nitty gritty of how you help us and our clients and how sure. people could also implement this into their short-term rental business. Sure, okay, so it's like a full circle moment because I actually started in interior design residential um, through a real estate agent. Aww. She saw how we had taken some of our um, primary homes and had done our own DIY work, work there. She loved what we'd done. She asked if I could do it for some of her clients and the business just started rolling. We work up in the foothills um, in residential design. And then we started investing in properties ourselves. We have um, four properties, two in Florida, two in Colorado. Um, and I just became, as I think all of us investors do, completely obsessed with property investment, real estate investing, and um, saw a little niche there where I could take my residential design experience and match it up with my love of real estate investing. Um, and started offering it to uh, short-term rental clients. It's a great business because it's really quick. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. There's no rules in short-term <laughs> rental design. It's just wild and wacky and really cool. And then I met you guys and um, you guys just were my main source of referrals and it's it's been a dream ever since. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's really great to hear. Um, and, you know, we are always thankful that you can take some of our clients off our hands. <laughs> this is like one of the most stressful moments uh, with with Airbnb, SDR sure. investing. Um, Chantal and I have both and, and you as well. We've gone through like designing it ourselves. Um, I, for one, am extremely bad at it. Uh, <laughs> I am like, I guess my nature is rather cheap. So right. I'm like really <laughs> trying to. What so, made you know, you that way? Uh, <laughs> let's, let's get into your childhood. Let's, 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 we can table that uh, <laughs> for now. But uh, yeah, like uh, my uh, natural inclination was sure. always to, you know, go to Facebook Marketplace mm -hmm. and just like sa save a little bit of money here and there. But um, I now realize that I was basically like just losing revenue. Sure. Uh, like because I was just running around town trying to save a few hundred dollars on like a couch or something. Sure. Uh, so h how do you like take take uh, our clients' stress away um, sure. and, you know, kind of walk us through the process of like designing an Airbnb, uh, right. either a house act or a, or a whole home? Sure. So I think um, that was fine. When Airbnb started, you could take grandma's furniture, you could shop Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. And if you have a real talent for vintage furniture or that is your your that serves your ideal guest, that's fine. But um, the way we have structured our processes and the way we do things is because we need to um, there's a, there's a couple of factors. So we need to target our ideal guests, which is not often the Facebook marketplace mm -hmm. sort of clientele. Um, our clientele is a lot more high end. They're younger, they're hipper, they're cooler. They have more money to spend mm -hmm. and they want to stay that matches that. We also have structured our process to be a four week process because we as investors know that the longer you're in a property without making revenue, that's just a big waste of time for everybody. So um, we don't shop mar Facebook marketplace because it's just such a time consuming experience trying to pick up furniture go look at furniture often you're repairing furniture mm -hmm. um so we have a um, process in place that helps us design 
Um, we have vendors in place that so it helps us design really quickly. Um, we have vendors in place that ship um, and uh, handle sort of returns and repairs. Uh, really, really quickly so that we're not wasting time for our clients. So yes, I think if your ideal market is suitable to Facebook Marketplace or secondhand furniture, that's great. Go for it. Um, it's going to take you a little bit longer. Uh, you're probably going to be dealing with repairs, but if that works for you, that works for you. That is not most markets, not our Florida market and not our Denver market. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, it's a long-winded way of mm. saying I think you can be um, penny-wise, pound-foolish in Airbnb design, and we try to eliminate that by only shopping vendors and products that are tried and tested, that deliver on time, that deal with returns on time. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I feel like this is so important. So when I started in short-term rental investing, the game was different. Like I was able sure. to do Facebook Marketplace, but also that's what I could afford at the right. time. And so I think that, you know, for people that are considering getting into this space, if that's what you can afford, like don't let that stop you. Sure. But what I have learned is you'd be surprised at the investment that you make in furniture, it's kind of like buying like a nice pair of shoes, mm -hmm. you know? Like if you invest in quality shoes or quality furniture, it should last you much longer. Right. And so I would say like, if you have like the resources to go and implement a team to help you to do the design, to do the install, and someone who's an expert in mm -hmm. finding things that are durable mm -hmm. and stylish, mm -hmm. that has actually served me better on the homes that like you've helped me right, with. Right. Um, and then I think another thing for investors, one of the most difficult seasons for a short-term rental investor is the day that they close to the day that they, they launch. launch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when I have done my own design, it's typically taken me three to four months sure. because I run a real estate brokerage and I don't have time to do, to do. Yeah, I don't have time to do that. And so when it takes me three to four months to complete, I'm losing out on three months of revenue that right. I could be earning. Right. So tell me about your process, because you work a lot with our out-of-state buyers. So let's say that they're never coming to Colorado. Mm -hmm. How do you deal mm -hmm. with ordering the furniture, delivering the furniture, installing the furniture, and what should people know before hiring a design sure. team? Sure. So yeah, we actually have two tracks of service. We have design only, and then we have full service. Um, the design only, I thought was going to be the bigger option because it's the most affordable option. I thought that was going to be the most utilized option, um, but it actually isn't. Mm -hmm. Our full service is our main, um, our biggest seller. And that's because, yes, we have the majority of our clients are out of state, but even those who are here, we're talking professional property investors. Mm -hmm. These are, you know, they just don't have time. Um, so, like I mentioned, our process is four weeks. We do a week for walk through, we go and walk through the property, we measure, we take a 3D capture, we get um, sort of feedback from the client of what design they want. We're not afraid uh, if your personal tastes are not going to be making you money <laughs> to push back on that a little bit and we find a happy medium. That's about the first week. The second week is us in full on design. We create design boards, we create a huge master list, which is like one of the biggest selling points of our <laughs> business because it keeps us organized. It um, That's where we list your vendors, that's where we list your Quantities, that's where we list your links. Um, it's just a really comprehensive sort of design period where we can go back and forth. You can see visually what the rooms are going to look like, which I also think is a huge selling point because mm -hmm. um, people, not all people are creative, right? Mm -hmm. And not all people have the ability to see a finished room. Um, and that was a, a, a huge thing for me because that's the way my brain works. So I'm like, yeah. Obviously, that's what it's going to look like. <laughs> um, but so many clients come back to us and they say that is so helpful to see the overall cohesive design. Mm -hmm. And then to have that master list where if they wanted to, if you have time, some of our clients are a little bit pickier than others. You can go and click a link. You can read the reviews. You can um, go look even at like the, the rub count of a fabric if you really <laughs> wanted to. Um, I don't suggest you do, you drive us crazy, we love you, <laughs> but you can. And so that's that week. And then we spend a week where we personally do all the ordering. In the beginning, we would allow some clients to kind of run with the list and order with their credit cards and we would break it up. Um, but 
after two years of doing this, that now, we just handle absolutely everything. We order, we um, track the orders, we are the ones who receive the product, our team pulls them into the house, which is another massive thing because when packages are coming and it's not your primary residence, you don't need to be leaving work to accept a couch. It's mm -hmm. just, you're a property investor, this mm -hmm. is not a money maker for you, do not invest your time in things that aren't going to have a return, mm -hmm. right? So we do all of that for you. We inspect the packages. If anything's broken, damaged, whatever, we are the ones who handle all of that. Um, that's about that week. And then we need another week for install. It's only one week um, where it's we wild, build and install. In yeah, we build and install an entire property. And that could be um, a two bedroom, one bathroom, or uh, like some of the homes we've done in Breck, uh, you're talking, I don't know, eight bedrooms, five mm -hmm. bathrooms, just really massive properties. Uh, we order your dumpster, we break down your trash, we handle the full install, we have a handyman, um, a full-time handyman to us, so we hang pictures, we hang TVs, we set up bistro lights, we hook up your propane, we'll, um, even sort of supervise the install of big ticket items like spas and saunas and that kind of thing. We handle paint, wallpaper, lighting, feature walls. We do it all and we do it all within a week. And that closes our, our entire process in four weeks. And it's it's something we're really, really proud of because I think we're the only um, SDR design firm in this area that can deliver a product in that short time. And we're at 45 plus properties and we have yet to run a single day over so that is yeah <laughs> and that is definitely I think something that's so unique about you yeah. as like a company owner um I before meeting you would work with designers and they would basically give me a concept so let's kind of talk about you know all the services that you offer sure. and if someone were trying to replicate this in a market that you didn't serve all the people that they would need on their team sure. to be able to launch a property in a month. Sure. So when I was getting um, you know work done from designers before, they would basically give me a concept. So they'd say like, okay, like we're seeing like let's talk about the the A frame. We're seeing this concept of like Lux mountain and then I got you know a couple of mood boards and then I got um, most of the major items like picked out and on sure. a spreadsheet but it wasn't everything. everything yeah and then there really wasn't a plan for you know how I was going to get the items delivered and who was going to install them and so what I ended up doing on that project was you know I just had all of these items delivered to my house but I have clients who have apartment buildings and they can't have like a six bedroom right. home, right. like a furniture being delivered to their right. residence. And so, you know, how would you handle just the delivery aspect? Like if someone couldn't work with your team and mm -hmm. like, how are you handling mm -hmm. that now as a, as a business as owner? As a business, yeah. So in our design only track um, and something that we're really proud of and that we're launching that I'd love to mention is we're actually doing a Airbnb design and install course, Ooh. which launches September 1st. So I'm really, really excited. I don't know Yay. if that's before or after this episode, um, but I'm sure you can find that information in the notes after the episode. Um, but that's that's something our course takers are going to have to address. And the vendors that we work with, um, Wayfair specifically, and Wayfair gets a bad rap because prior to, I think, their sort of revolution, um, it was cheap. It was cheap quality. It wasn't mm -hmm. great. They, they do not do that anymore across the board. If you are shopping carefully, and this is something our course touches on, um, if you are looking at reviews, if you are studying the fabrics, which we will teach you how to do, um, if you are looking at uh, past purchased photos, like there's there's ways to vet products on Wayfair, um, they're going to be an exceptional resource for you mm -hmm. because they ship quick, they're affordable, they have excellent tools to make sure you're choosing the right product, um, they have fantastic customer service and they have something really cool, which is a consolidated delivery. Um, we don't need to use those ourselves because we have a team here and we have teams where we are like predominant markets are, but you will be able to consolidate a delivery to get it all on one day oh. at the same time. Oh. So you need to, you know, find if it, if it, if you live in Denver and your market is Florida, find a handyman, find your cleaner, have them meet the products there on day one mm -hmm. or whenever that, that delivery date is scheduled and accept all those pack packages at the same time. So that's the way to kind of eliminate that issue. Um, Wayfair also offers install 
at a pretty decent price. Not as good as like say our team because mm. our staff is there. But um, if you are out of state, they, they can install absolutely everything for you. And they do <laughs> third party contracting yes. for that, right? Yes, they do. And everyone who we've ever had has been absolutely incredible. Um, my top handyman in Woodland Park and who all my clients love. His name's Ken. Hi, Ken. Uh, he actually came through Wayfair, and we poached him, and I don't feel bad about it. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Ruthless. But yeah, yes, <laughs> ruthless. you got to be ruthless. Um, but, but that's the kind of thing, as you get into this, like we do, and that's why I think our company is such a great resource, because we know what we're doing. We have experience. We have these contacts. Um, but that's the way I can, you know, if you take our course or if you hire us for design um, only, these are the kinds of things we can mm -hmm. we can help you with. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, it's a great option. It's a huge budget saver because it's about half the cost of our full service. Mm -hmm. um, do I advocate for full service? A hundred percent. And I think if you go to read our reviews, you'll see why, because it really does just save your sanity. But if it's not an option, I don't want people to think that there's no sort of hope for them. Mm -hmm. You know, you deserve a well-designed Airbnb. The return on, on, on the investment of a well-designed Airbnb is just massive. With that said, <laughs> uh, I guess like what 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 would you say is like the most important thing about design these days? You've seen, you know, you've done forty five properties now. Um, what what is the most important thing? Like, uh, sure. yeah, sure. Um, so I think that our so we have six key pillars of Airbnb design, and the number one there is catering to your ideal guest. And that means that your market, so your location, the things your property has to offer and the people that are um, being attracted to that property need to be served first. Um, that's going to narrow down your sort of nightly rate. Mm -hmm. That's going to narrow down your scope of your project and it's going to narrow down the amount of money that you're gonna need to spend to serve those guests. So that to me is absolutely number one. Um, what are what are some examples yeah. of like clientele that you would market to? Like, what have you seen your clients market to, like as avatars for sure. types of clientele? Sure. So I'll just compare like high low, mm -hmm. um, and I sort of on the lower end, I will discuss my own property because I feel comfortable doing that. I don't want to ever say my clients are lower end, but um, one of our properties in Florida, Cape Coral, Cape Coral Florida, mm -hmm. um, our like least night nightly rate I think is about one hundred and twenty nine. Mm -hmm. dollars a night yeah. knowing that and you should know your numbers and I know good neighbor is fantastic at helping with that <laughs> um, but knowing that nightly rate our budget for furnishing was twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars I've spent and you guys know uh, your spends are can get a lot bigger than that but mm -hmm. twenty thousand dollars I knew we were gonna be able to serve our guests really well right and then one of our biggest most expensive um, properties actually there's two of them that come to mind one is in Breck mm -hmm. 3.2 million dollar home mm -hmm. um, our budget for furnishing I think was around 72 which is what I invoiced the client we actually ended up refunding her because we came in at like 66 mm -hmm. which was a fantastic surprise and another reason you need to work with an Airbnb designer <laughs> because we know what we're doing and we don't waste money um, and then a full home remodel that we're doing up in Westminster of all places <laughs> but it's going to be a fantastic fun amazing property and that um, the spend there was like 130 okay <laughs> so uh, the nightly rate there that's going to uh, be a little bit higher because we can really cram people into that property it's going to be a fun property geared towards younger people maybe bachelors bachelorettes um, they're just going to be able to command a higher nightly rate. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're really, really careful about is once we identify, help our clients identify that ideal guest is setting a reasonable and solid budget. We don't want you spending money that you're not going to see a return mm -hmm. on. Yeah, I think that that's so important is identifying the items that are going to be your highest return. And I've I've seen from like an avatar standpoint, you know, for the more affordable stays, maybe you're gearing towards like a family. Like that's right. that's the person that you're thinking of is, you know, a family that has a couple of kids or maybe multiple families, or maybe, you know, you're gearing towards people that for us, um, the bridge house, the person that I had in mind and the coolest thing that happened from this is like we're getting these types of travelers, but 
people that are coming to see Red Rocks shows. Yeah. And actually, I, I don't think we've talked about this, but I had this like crazy thing in the back of my mind. I was like, I bet we're going to get Red Rocks performers. Ooh. And we have. Oh, you have? <laughs> we're <laughs> sitting have. on my sofas? Yes. <laughs> yes. But, you know, it's like it is so interesting. Like when you are thinking about like that avatar that, that does really make so many decisions based off of, you know, how much you should be spending on your design right. to how much are they going to pay on a nightly rate to how many people are they going to want to what type of beds are they going to want, whether it's bunk beds right. or king right. size beds, all of that goes into really defining your avatars. So. Absolutely. And that, that's like, that's our number one. That's where we always start. And I think as long as you've nailed down your ideal guest or that avatar of your ideal guest, it's going to make the process so much easier. Mm -hmm. but, so that's where you, you start. And then you get into um, all, all the different ones. So like the amenities, the function and durability, the, um, I've got them written out here because I didn't <laughs> want to forget. Yeah. So I knew. So like function and durability, the aesthetic, like that's super duper important. The, the vibe or the theme. A lot of people come to me and um, they come to us specifically because we tend to go for more vibe mm -hmm. than theme. And I think theme can do so fantastically well. I'm not knocking theme at all. Um, I just don't think that it's the be all and the end all mm -hmm. of Airbnb design. Um, so we'll set a name for like the bright house or the view house or mm -hmm. the bridge house, mm -hmm. or we've got Creekside. And um, we tend to set in our own personal business more of a vibe than a theme. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some incredible theme designers out there. Mm -hmm. And I always tell my clients, um, I'm straight up and I'm straight up. I know my, I know my strengths. Um, I'm saying if you're looking for something that's classic and classy and beautiful and, um, you know, we've identified your ideal guests and we're going to target them like, we're your people. If you want wild <laughs> theme design, there are so many fantastic other designers out there. We could do it all day long. But I also want to just, you know. Know who your clientele is. Know who is. your clientele is. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I like that. Uh, and then the other ones. Uh, so uh, amenities. Amenities are the biggest factor. We were speaking about this before. Right. Uh, people have leveled up their design so well. And I think lay people... We just are, I don't know, I just feel like more people know how to make things beautiful maybe than they than they used to. Like that, like I said, nobody's, not many people are doing grandma's furniture. They understand that there is a level that needs to be put into Airbnbs to have a measure of success. You want to be a step above that even. And I think from the research I've done that you're going to find that in the amenities. Mm -hmm. And that's something we really, really try to push. We're always learning about new amenities. We're always learning about the new things that people want. What's cool? What's hip? What are people loving? Um, and we're really trying to incorporate that into our designs because we're seeing that that's where the biggest return on investment right now is is on your amenities. Yeah. I mean, uh, what what are some of like the coolest amenities that uh, are new or hip? Like, I mean, I know that like, you know, we always tell our clients to get like a sauna, sure. get like a hot tub. And of sure. course, there's maintenance with that. Uh, pool tables are always super popular. Sure. But like, what's something like new? I mean, I, I, a couple of my clients have tried or thought about at least putting like pickleball courts in their backyard, right. but you know, the, the noise might bother the neighbors a little bit. So and at yeah. $22,000, the cost might yeah. not. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so then what's it, going on? it comes back right, right again to that ideal guest in your target market, right? Mm. Um, if you're charging $120 a night, I don't suggest you spend $22,000 <laughs> on a pickleball court. Um, swimming pools are massive, but you don't want to put those in. You're right. just not going to see the return on investment in your lifetime. But big ones, as you guys know, hot tubs. Mm -hmm. So massive, especially here in Colorado. Um, but depending on your target market, we can go anywhere from really simple game rooms, which we try to incorporate into every property. If you've got a corner, I'm shoving a, a frisbee or an air hockey in there. Uh, people just love them. They're also relatively affordable and really easy to maintain. And then we can go up to one that we're doing um, in two properties right now is mini golf. Oh, hmm. putt putt. Yeah, putt putt. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so putt putt is a really big one. Um, the return on investment there is is pretty darn decent because if you shop around, it can be affordable and the return is is pretty darn great. You need to be careful in a market like Colorado where we're so seasonal. You, mm -hmm. you have to weigh up the cost of your amenity versus how 
how much are people actually going to to use it? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that kind of thing. Theater rooms, game rooms, um, like we said, putt putt, hot tubs, saunas. In our particular property up in the mountain, we couldn't sort of match up our nightly rate to the cost of maintenance on a hot tub. Mm-hmm. Um, we also live in a area where people are super sensitive to like the water usage and um, what you're doing sort of with your property. So we decided to put in a sauna mm-hmm. instead. Mm-hmm. And it's a great draw. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than mm-hmm. a hot tub. Um, it's one of the things we list on our master list, which we can get into. If you get into my course or visit our website, um, we list it as an option because it's $2,200. It plugs into a 15 amp, like straight up outlet, and there is no maintenance fees. We put eucalyptus and peppermint spray in it, people, tea tree, mm. people spray it down, and that's it versus $250 for hot tub maintenance. Mm-hmm. And this is where I think it's really helpful to have somebody who knows what they're doing help you mm-hmm. because um, we are very intentional about finding out. How much time, how much effort, how much money do you want to put into this mm-hmm. property every month? And like, let's reverse engineer what kind of things you want to have there. Mm-hmm. And I've seen you too convert garage spaces yes. into amenity rooms. And I, I know like, you know, from a real estate perspective, like sometimes I'm so nervous about resale and I'm like, oh no, like you, <laughs> you just got rid of your garage right. and that's, you know, minus like 30,000. Right. But you know, really like when you're in this space, you have to go for it. Commit. It yeah. has, you have to commit to yes. it. It has yes. to be a functioning short-term rental. Right. So for someone who wants to convert a garage into a game room, what type of things are you putting in there? What type of budget should sure. you have? And is there anything that you should think about you know, before making a stinky garage into a game into room? Into a game room. So this is cool because um, we've done it both ways. So we've done like, let's go you know, full force, let's commit, and we're gonna drywall your garage, and we're gonna put LVP down, and we're gonna put heating down, and we're gonna make it this really cool, really comfortable year-round space. Mm -hmm. If that works for your target market and your nightly rate, let's do that. Other options, we have garages out there, there's fantastic on-street parking, we don't need the garage, but we don't have the budget, and honestly, we're not gonna command that higher rate in that area, or just, you know, the client's budget is smaller, we're painting the garage dark, Mm. we're throwing up some cool lighting, we're having our cleaning crew come in and scrub your bare concrete floor, we're putting some game rooms in and a bar fridge, and we're calling it a day. Mm-hmm. So again, it's just really important to weigh up your budget and your ideal guest and figure out what level you need to do. Mm-hmm. Um, we also try to take in, coming from residential design, we also try to take in consideration just like the structural factors. I mean, if your mm-hmm. garage has a history of flooding or in heavy snow melt or whatever, I don't suggest laying LVP. <laughs> I don't suggest putting drywall in, yeah. but we sure as heck can put some you know, game consoles in there, paint the walls, put up some neon signs, and it's super fun for your to three hundred dollar a night property yeah and you know you guys touched on something that i think is really important to talk about too is just you touched on you know you're in an area where water is like a precious resource and also like in the mountains yeah. like not disturbing your neighbors is such a huge yes. deal and you know you wouldn't think that design goes into this but really design is directing guest behavior right too and so something that i've noticed in our mountain properties is I want to be careful to not direct them into amenities that are loud and noisy outside. And you would think um, something that I've learned in my mountain properties is I have a property on 12 acres and you would think that, you know, 12 acres means privacy and seclusion. But in reality, (laughs) those neighbors are far more sensitive than my metropolitan properties that are 10 feet from the neighbor next door. Absolutely. And the reason is, is because, you know, we are in Colorado. We are a mix of like residential plus vacation home. And so neighbors are a real consideration. Right. And so for me, you know, I have a hot tub outside and I really had to deal with in the beginning, like noise complaints Mm -hmm. because people were outside in the hot tub. And so I have been really strategic with keeping more amenities inside, inside, knowing that. 
Right. No, and that's a great point because that's our final pillar of design is safety and responsibility. Mm -hmm. And it's a boring one, but it's really, really, really important. And there again, like we know what we're doing. So um, that's knowing your target market and your and your location and taking that all into consideration. Um, as part of our package, we include stuff like fire extinguishers. Mm -hmm. We're including first aid. We're including bear sprays even. Mm -hmm. um, just It just depends on where your property is and the risk you're trying to mitigate we never never in Colorado do um, open fire mm -hmm. you know uh, our barbecues are propane that we spec our fire pits are propane mm -hmm. that we spec um, we're very careful about even you know putting candles on site in the mountain because then you have to provide a lighter yeah. and if you're providing a lighter like where does that go you know and in some of our areas um, we don't really get into outside landscaping but sometimes our scope extends that way mm -hmm. we are careful in our personal properties up in the mountains to remove as much of the exterior lighting as we can yeah. because when you take away that lighting people spend less time outside after dark mm -hmm. um, so it's it's things like that where we try to just be really um, thoughtful and mindful that like you said our design sort of channels the behavior of mm -hmm. our guests mm -hmm. yeah and I think that that's so important when you're thinking about it from like the amount of guests that you're going to sleep to the like amount of time that they are going to be spending outside after right. dark right um, if you really are prioritizing your neighbors um, being happy and I think that also this kind of comes down to legislation in your area yes. you know if it is if it is legal for you to have a short-term rental and it is legal for you to have a certain number of guests like you absolutely want to do everything stick that you can to it. yes yeah <laughs> to like stick to that right and don't like design for more because no. then you know you're throwing money down the drain right. in the case that you have a neighbor complain absolutely and that was one of our so when we uh take on a new client we send them out an str design intake questionnaire mm -hmm. and on that we put uh you need to put your address you need to put like do you yeah. have a permit or not we need to know what your desired occupancy is and we are not afraid if you're saying you want to put 16 people in your house but we know that mm -hmm. legislation only allows you know 10 we're not afraid to push back and say mm -hmm. hey this is not this is not going to work mm -hmm. we're also not afraid to push back when um the size of the home the sort of flow of the home is not going to make a comfortable stay for 16 people mm -hmm. because we can put as much money as we want into it. We can make it as beautiful as we want. And you're going to get three, four star reviews because your guests are going to feel yeah. uncomfortable. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, we totally like legislation, functionality of the home. It's all really, really important. And these are things that can escape if you don't know what you're doing, if this is your first time doing it, it's mm -hmm. really easy to just make these stunning, stunning properties with every amenity you could possibly want and still end up with a three-star stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and let's let's also talk about your master list. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to talk about this because this ties into like what you can ultimately protect. So as a short-term rental host, you spend all of this money on design. Like you can spend 50, 60, 70, 80,000 yes, dollars <laughs> in, in furniture. Yeah. And then let's say that you have a guest that comes and stays and ruins something. I used to not have a master list. You know that. You could tell that. <laughs> and so I was not a master list girl. And yeah. so then, you know, Airbnb, I would I would call them and I'd say, you know, hey, Airbnb or hey, Verbo. Like, I had a guest, like, damage this really expensive chair. And they were like, cool, where'd you get it from? Right. And, and like, I was like, mm. I, I, I don't know. Do you have a receipt? When did you yes. buy it? Yes. And then my CPA would be like, hey, how much money did you spend on your furniture this year? And I'm like, well, geez, like, good question. I don't know. So, like, tell us about, you know, what you include in your master list sure. and, like, how you manage that. Okay. Yeah, so that master list, like I said, it's extremely extensive. It has multiple tabs on it that go sort of, area by area. We have a common tab, so that includes all common spaces. We have a bedroom tab, that's all bedroom spaces. We have a construction tab so that lists out any construction materials, which would be like lighting, tile, um, all of those, uh, bathroom hardware, whatever. And in that, we break it then down by room. So you'll be able to reference, say you have guests, somebody vomits on your sofa, mm -hmm. it happens, um, or reps poop in a towel and leaves it in your closet. Did that happen oh, to you? twice. <laughs> what? I don't know At the house. same time, it's just the Florida house. This is the Florida house. It's the Florida house. I'm from house. Florida, so I can say that. 
<laughs> and we love Florida. Uh, think of us. There was a hurricane hit it that way today. Yeah. But um, yeah, no. So say that happens and you need to go and, and reorder or reference for an Airbnb claim or whatever. Um, you simply open up your master list. You go to your bathroom tab. It's going to list their bath mats and it's going to have the quantity that we ordered for you. It's going to have the original price you purchased it at. Obviously, pl- prices will fluctuate, but you're going to have a really good idea of what you purchased it at so you could make that claim. And then there's going to be a link. You simply click the link. It'll take you straight to where it, where it was ordered and you can click purchase and, and get it again. And that we do that for absolutely every single item on the master list. I love that. Yeah. And I want to get into like some more like tactical stuff. Sure. So I'm going to like rapid fire <sighs> some questions okay. for you, okay? I'm nervous. Um, white sheets or colored sheets? I'm a white sheets girl. And why? Um, I think it's easier to manage the cleaning. You can throw bleach at anything that's white. Um, and it's just sort of easier to replace. White from Target is the same as white mm. from uh, Utopia, is the same as white from, you know, Costco. That's why we do all white. Yes, colored are great. And I know you had such a genius idea, which was to do different colors for different sizes. Mm. Um, but then, you know, if you're getting replacement sheets and you don't get the same beige, does that even sort of work? So white. Nice. Um, <laughs> towels, light or dark? Body towels, white. Feet towels or anything gross like makeup and that kind of thing. Feet towels. Charcoal. Foot, feet towels. <laughs> bad, foot towels. Bad mats. Foot towels. Bad Qu- mats. Quilts or duvet? Um, we actually have started putting duvets in all our, our properties because we now triple sheet. So that's fitted sheet, flat sheet really thin sort of comforter that washes really quickly thanks utopia (laughs) and then another um flat sheet on top as well so we don't yeah exactly triple sheet we don't actually wash the comforters in every single stay because they're protected by the two flat sheets don't come at me um (laughs) if they do need washing they're washed and they can be bleached okay and then how many sheets per bed Mm -hmm. so we started out with two and then people would ask me every single client would say our cleaner says three and for whatever reason, I fought that for so long, and eventually now we do three. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah, um, yeah, I I agree with you on a lot of these fronts. Like three sheets <laughs> per bed. <laughs> is gonna be your friend. Yeah. I love the idea of the triple sheet. And yeah. honestly, like for me, I just wanna make my cleaner's life easier. easier. And yeah. honestly, that saves you money because if you can make their time at your property less by providing like an extra set of sheets, right. it, they're gonna charge you right. less. And so for me, with like all different size beds, um, I ended up doing different color sheets. So for like my queen size beds, I might have gray. For my king size beds, I might have white. For my twin size beds I might have blue so then they're not rumbling right. rumbling through all the sheets trying to figure out which bed it goes to right. it's really quick and, and we, we actually found a great solution for that and it doesn't suit everybody and sometimes people would say like oh there's bedding in every closet we actually leave the bedding for that specific room in that closet I noticed yeah. that you did that in yes. our house. Yes. It's such a good idea. Well, because I don't want guests messaging me, like say they vomit or mm-hmm. a kid pees the bed, which mm-hmm. does happen. Um, I don't want guests messaging me. I try to eliminate as many messages as I can. Um, so when they're using the closet, because they are, they will see the bedding there. They're more than welcome to help themselves. And people are like, whoa, that just creates extra um, linen for the cleaner. I'm like, nobody on vacation wants to change their bed. So they're changing it for a reason. And if there's a reason why they're changing the bed, I kind of want them to take care of it because that's going to (laughs) eliminate stains and, and any, you know. Smelly issues there. Yeah, that's yeah. a very good idea. So we keep idea. all of our spare sheets in the, in the closets now. And also in a lot of the properties that we do, we don't have extensive owner's closet spaces. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you know, but the laundry takes up, the linens take up the most of those owner's closets. Mm-hmm. This way we get away with a skinny little owner's closet and everybody has their beddings in the room. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, obviously, Terry, you are a wealth of knowledge, um, and we, you know, we could probably talk about this all day. But um, I guess I'm curious to know what uh, what's next for you as a real estate investor, yeah. um, or like you know, as an owner of a, as a, as an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like, what do you see yourself doing, you know, or what are your next moves in the next year or two? Sure. So um, we have quite a few businesses. Um, this Airbnb design business is our number one focus. We're also launching this Airbnb design course. I have four kiddos, one baby that we adopted 
literally as I was like getting this business off the ground. So I am trying to uh, create things that are evergreen for us, Mm -hmm. passive income. Mm. Um, We definitely want more short-term rental properties, trying to retire my husband by like the end of next year so that we can start in um, sort of commercial, uh, small sort of commercial endeavors like Mm. um, small apartment buildings, that kind of thing. Um, so that's our plan there, but I love doing this Airbnb, uh, design and install so much. I get to meet so many different people and it pushes me to learn things all the time because, you know, like we said, it was grandma's furniture and then it was good, you know, just beautiful design. Now it's amenities. I just love learning what comes next. And Denver is just such a cool sort of environment to be in real estate, you know, mm-hmm. with all these meetups, our Rocky Mountain Women's Invest, yes. your good neighbor meetups. I mean, those are the best parts of the job. So <laughs> just keep keep going, keep going and finding new things. I am a squirrel, so everything's shiny and fun. <laughs> and who knows well. Aren't we all? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, um, another thing that I wanted to ask is yeah. just from like a budget standpoint, sure. do you have like a rule of thumb on like, how much does it actually cost? So I would love to know like your thoughts on like, how much people should be spending on right. design and install. Sure. And then also how much should they budget for sure. a property that is a three, four, five bedroom? Sure. So um, our design and install fees, I have got to a point now where I feel comfortable talking about it. As an investor myself, I, I always thought like, nobody's gonna wanna spend this amount of money, but now I understand the value. So our design and install fees on a typical like four bedroom, two bathroom to about like five bedroom, three bathroom is around $10,000. Um, that includes our full design, full concepts, master list you get access to all of like a wealth of knowledge you're able to contact me we can sort of guide you through what we know um, it inclu- includes the install team of about two to three people it includes a basic clean both before and after install and it includes handyman service so we are lit- and then final styling so we're literally like hanging all the pictures putting up the tvs you are we're, we're stocking your cupboards you are ready on that final day to host a guest um, that's the the design and install fees. Design only sits around four to six thousand, depending on the size mm-hmm. of the home, um, and then budget spend. So we can we can work within your budget. It's what we do. Mm-hmm. I've had a client with a five bedroom, three bathroom house in Arvada. Tell me they want to spend twenty two thousand dollars. We you know, worked hard and we made it happen with the caveat that they understand they're going to get $22,000 worth, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're wondering why you don't have pictures on every wall or excessive decor or Mm -hmm. fantastic amenities, it's because we take your budget seriously and we work within your budget. And then um, we've had clients on on the more expensive properties go up to, like I said, $120,000. But I think a happy medium for, for most of my investors in a four, four, two or five, three, you're looking, you can reasonably furnish your house for around 30 to $32,000. Yeah. And awesome. that's including stuff like feature walls, like updated lighting, wallpaper. Um, and then we also include your first round of um, consumables. So like hmm. kitchen items, uh, soaps, dish pods, toilet paper, paper towels, that's all of that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that is um, really a reasonable like spend. And I think that something else that people forget is as a designer, you also get some discounts and um, some of those are just exclusive to you. Mm -hmm. Another tool that you and I got to use for ours was Minoan Minoan. um, and they're fantastic. I love like the place that you can actually order everything in like one spot and have sure. it all delivered. And they have crazy discounts. I'm they actually- They have crazy discounts. Yeah, <laughs> I am not paid by Minoan, but you should know that Minoan is excellent. They have like 30 to 40% off of like really nice high-end stuff. Right. And so if you were to get like a more luxury rental, kind of like the bridge house or the A-frame, and you wanted like a really, you know, crisp high-end feel, you can get sometimes 40% off of right. these like high-end Right, you're high kind of designers. getting like wafer pricing right. for Crate and Barrel, West Elm, CB2, right. yeah, mm. yeah. It, yeah. It, it is pretty awesome, yeah. Awesome, um, anything else that you had? Um, nothing really, I just wanted to, you know, thank you for coming on, sure. and of course, like, uh, what's your website, you know, sure. where can we find you, sure. what's your, you know, what's, yeah. where can we find you? Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me, it's so much fun. I 
super passionate. So anytime <laughs> I get to talk about it, it's really, really exciting and fun. Um, you can find us at foundhomeco.com. That's our website, um, foundhome underscore co on Instagram. Or um, if you have any questions, you want to email me, it's T-E-R-R-I hyphen L-E-I-G-H at foundhomeco.com. Awesome. And we'll yeah. put all of that in the show notes awesome. too. Terry Lee, thank you so yeah, much for coming. And we thank you all for tuning in today. I hope that this was valuable to you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us and please do share this on Instagram and tag Terry Lee. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.